Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the place where we discuss all things USMNT, La Selección Mexicana. My name is Adrian. I'm joined once again by my co-host in Tucayo. Adrian, Adrian, how you doing, man? Hey, hey, what's up, dude? Once again, we are here and I'm ready to talk Doña Fede. The one you've been waiting for, the one everybody's been waiting for. Yeah. Finally, some news and developments from the US, from the Mexican Federation camp. And, um, you know, quite a few announcements. Uh, didn't really say much, mm-hmm. but... Uh, without said said a lot didn't say much um but uh you know still still without a coach but um yeah let's get right into it man because at least we fi- finally got a a plan a um uh kind of a a time frame as to what they're trying to do what they're trying to implement to kind of get back to mm-hmm. to where we know el three can be will this be successful i don't know uh you kind of you kind of summarized it for me uh when we were talking as a uh they're just going back to where they were eight years ago. <laughs> so, exactly. uh, I mean, we'll, we'll, just... uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh, what happens. But uh, let's get right into it. Let's start with um, Doña Fede, dude. What can you tell us let's about the, you know, changing in the structure of the Federación? Uh, what will it have impacts on? Uh, yeah. What can you tell us about that? Sure. So just to give more, uh, you know, uh, context to our PPG family out there. Uh, who are not familiar with this. Uh, it, around eight years ago, uh, Doña Feder decided that it was in the best interest for, for El Tri and uh, La Federación to essentially get rid of the sporting director position and make a bunch of changes in the national uh, team uh, organization chart, right? And essentially also forcing like a move out of uh, South American uh, tournaments and you know so on and so forth things that ended up being uh, a huge disaster for Mexico on, in the most res- recent uh, World Cup. So based on that, the first thing that you know they came out and said was, "We're bringing back the sporting director role." So you know they they announced it as is. This is the h- huge the the, mo- the hugest innovation that we've done <laughs> in you know in a while in in Mexican football. Right? It's, it's just like dude. All right, if I can summarize things in, in one sentence is dime que te, que te equivocaste sin decirme que te equivocaste. So <laughs> this, is, this is essentially one of the biggest changes. So they're bringing back that. Um, they, 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 eight years ago, they decided that the president, Doña Svede president, was capable of handling both the sporting and the business side of things. Right. Now, now they're, go, they're going back to what, uh, what used to be the, the regular organizational chart, chart. Now they have... A Doña Fede president for business affairs and a Doña Fede sporting director for anything that has to do with national teams, both um, male and female. Um, on top of that, they also are claiming that they're going to increase by 40% uh, the budget for uh, homegrown players to start, you know, developing talent. Whatever that 40% means, I don't know if it's coming out of, you know, the annual budget, if it's coming out of the uh some uh S- sorry S- well, I guess some SMU matches in in the states how much money is that we don't know it's just 40% it sounds cool it sounds dandy it sounds something let's go with it right and uh lastly they also devised and showed a plan for 2026 where they're aiming to have better competition uh during those years they're trying to get into uh south american tournaments and also uh, participate on, or, or I guess, make changes on CONCACAF FIFA uh, approved tournaments so they can be more competitive by including, you know, different <clears throat> countries throughout this World Cup cycle. Because as you know, Mexico and the USMNT are not necessarily uh, playing for qualification because they are hosting the next World Cup. So it's right. it's important that they have some sort of, um, uh, I guess, uh, plan as to how they're going to prep for that tournament, right? Right. Um, I guess I was, I, before you keep going, a point I kind of, that 40% that they want to kind of implement that we don't know where it's going to come from into, you know, youth mm-hmm. development. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it's actually implemented in. Is it going to be implemented into like grassroots, uh, just, uh, you know, street football, not street, but uh, like Sunday, 
you know, kid football, youth football? Is it going to be implemented into Liga MX uh, youth teams? Is it going to be implemented? And if it's implemented into Liga MX youth teams, how are they going to distribute that? Are the bigger teams going to get more? Are the little smaller teams going to get more? It's going to be interesting to see. Um, yeah, and uh, interesting to see if it's you know if it if it makes a difference long term um, because you know we used to be so uh, excited to see the youth players because they used to do well they used to qualify to all the olympics they used to win the olympics they used mm-hmm. to qualify to the u17 world cup u20 world cup win those tournaments and it's been a while since you know one they've kind of qualified and two since they've actually you know performed well at those tournaments so uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see and uh like you said you know usa and mexico don't have to qualify so uh the gold cup i think they're expanding it to 16 teams now and six of them are going to be conmebol teams and 10 concacaf teams so it's going to be um interesting to see those changes and how i think ultimately the federations are probably going to end up uh, merging it's kind of looks like it what it's going towards now with copa america being here 2024 gold cup including six conmebol teams Mm -hmm. um they might end up merging eventually but uh, we'll see um so what, like you mentioned, they're they're going to be focusing on more uh, playing higher quality players. Uh, they have a friendly against Germany scheduled for October of this year, which is a plus. Yeah. Um, they they normally you know would normally play Suriname <laughs> or teams at yeah. Salvador. Uh, so these these teams That's a that be playing, yeah will be it's, it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if they announced it today. Maybe you you have clarification if, where it's going to be held. Is it going to be in Mexico? Is it going to be in the states? Is it going to be in Germany? I don't know. Um, I, I don't know yet. I I assume it's going to be in the states. Um, just because of uh, how packed the European nations have uh, their schedule in terms of nations leagues and, and other competitions that I feel it has to be, you know, a non FIFA official game. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise I don't know how they're going to make it work. Uh, but you know, that's, I guess, interesting. We'll see. Uh, hopefully they get more uh, challenges like these in, in the future instead of, you know, Jamaica or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> All right, the I do. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, one thing that I forgot on, you know, the structure of Doña Fede, they also made this committee of uh, national teams or Comité de la Selección Mexicana, and this includes five owners or presidents of La Liga MX teams, which include Emilio Escarraga from Televisa and America, uh, Amaury Vergara from Chivas. Uh, Jorge Hank from Cholos and Querétaro, uh, Eduardo Tinajero from Necaxa, and uh, Ira Ragorri from, from Llantos and Atlas. So they are the guys who are, they, they, they want, well, I guess they, they will be in charge of making the decision on who is going to be the next coach. Um, and uh, But they're not the ones who are looking for it because that's the... Uh, sporting director's job, who right. is Ares de Purga, sorry, Ares de Parga, um, who, by the <laughs> way, he, uh, you know, they, they made this huge fuss about bringing in a sporting director who understands the sport and was, not necessarily was a player, but has some sort of like understanding at a very, you know, uh, a very detailed and depth and uh, I guess uh, very well understanding, good understanding of what the sport is about. Um, mm-hmm. And they yet, yet they go with this guy, with Ares de Parga, who, by the way, he sucked as a Pumas. He sucked as a Querétaro. So I wonder why they just went with it, you know? There's a, there's a saying in Mexico that goes, uh, or I guess in, 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 I guess in, the, I guess in, the, in the mafia, right? That you, you tend to go with those who are loyal rather than the ones that are uh, smart. So mm-hmm. I think this is one of those, you know, choices that they're going with someone who's going to be loyal to uh, Emilio Escarraga, to Mauri Vergara, to Ira Ragorri. Um, and I don't know, man. I mean, it's, uh, we see changes and then we see these kind of decisions and I'm like, it's panco lo mismo. Yeah. Two steps Nothing's forward, still. one step backwards. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, uh, we ain't going nowhere, dude. Yeah, um, I don't know. So they, the second part of the announcement today was focus on Liga MX, um, mm-hmm. a, quote unquote, a lot and not so many changes. Um, can you summarize for us the main the main points here that were discussed for Liga MX? Yeah, man. So as you know, Liga MX, uh, I think right before the pandemic started, 
uh, decided that it was in the best intention of the league to remove relegation and promotion uh, based on that not all teams that were fighting for promotion had the economical capacity to withstand the challenges of being a Liga MX uh, top flight team. So now they're bringing it back. Uh, now the, the, the next thing that I'm going to say, I hope that I'm clear because it's going to be a little weird and confusing. Um, now Liga MX has two tournaments, right? Clausura and Apertura, and both of them have a champion. Right. Well, now they're going to continue having those, those, uh, that, 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 that style of tournaments to Ligillas and two champions, mm -hmm. but the team who ends as the team with the most points throughout the year gets the a calendar trophy. year. The calendar year, exactly. So from May to, I guess from August to May, uh, whoever makes the most points, they're going to get a title. They're going to get a trophy. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, yeah, we'll talk about it, but I just want to say it's going to be interesting to see how the Mexican fans and Liga MX fans adapt or uh, accept that trophy. If it's going to be like a Mickey Mouse cup that nobody gives a shit about, yeah. or which I'm thinking it's going to be. But yeah, go on. Um, well, I'll tell you something that one of my buddies told me uh, in a minute that is kind of funny. Uh, the next thing that they say they're going to... They, they've been trying to reduce the amount of uh, non-homegrown players Uh, on each team, uh, they started, I think in 2020, they had like 11 and they've been downsizing uh, steadily for a couple of years. Um, it, they were supposed to go down from, I think right now it's 10. They were supposed to go down to nine by this year, but they said no. But now it, now they're serious about it and it, it looks like they're <laughs> going to end up with just seven per team. So, yep. I mean, we'll see. And uh, the next two are essentially getting rid of uh, multipropiedad or I guess multi-ownership of different teams. As you know, Liga MX has uh, an owner that owns two different teams like Jorge Hank, who owns Cholos and Querétaro, Irara Gorri, who owns Atlas and Llantos, um, and uh, Grupo Pachuca, who owns León and Pachuca. So mm -hmm. they're supposed to get rid of that. We'll see how that goes. And uh, they are also... They want to go back to South American tournaments, but... Uh, They will not go back to Libertadores just yet, but I know there's a, they mentioned a couple of things that are very interesting, like a final four with the champions of Sudamericana and Copa Libertadores along with the CONCACAF champions. Um, and they're also mentioning something about like a, you know, like a, like a Pan American league, something like that. So uh, they're trying to get more, um, I guess, uh, game time with South American sites, which Oh, it was good. I, I don't. I don't know where that'll fit in the calendar. They're already so busy as is, and they're freaking starting the league's cup, which was so unnecessary. Um, <laughs> they probably regrets. They probably regret signing that now. Uh, well, they they probably don't. They're probably getting rich off of that. But um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, another part regarding the Yamekis, yeah, they they got rid of their pechaje, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot about that. They got rid of repechaje, so now they're going to go back to only eight teams classified to Liguilla, which, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it, less, it, it makes the tournament less exciting in a way. Um, but, yeah, they're getting rid of repechaje, so watch out, Chivas, because you're going down. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they brought back promotion and relegation. Or they're mm -hmm. going to bring it back, right? Thanks, Thank you, yes. sweet, sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, when is that going to be yeah, implemented? Um, I don't think they set up a date just yet. I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, in the next maybe year or so. I would surprise if they implemented it right, right after the end of this uh, tournament, which, I, I mean, honestly, I don't think they have to wait for anything to, for that to happen. Uh, but I, I, I watched the freaking interview like three times. And if I'm not mistaken, they say something like, we're going to bring it back, but we're evaluating different options because the expansion teams are still, most of them are still not uh, certified to be considered like a top flight Liga MX team. Mm -hmm. They had to like fulfill some of FIFA uh, requirements, requirements and certificates before doing that. Uh -huh. And uh, one very interesting question was like, I don't know why uh, Liga MX requires them to have like a 20 something thousand uh, stadium with the, you know, latest technology that is, uh, I guess, uh, required by FIFA. 
when if you go to some other leagues in Europe, they barely have like, you know, 20,000 people stadiums and they probably don't have the top notch technology. And yet FIFA allows them to be, you know, part of the league. So uh, he didn't have, Mikel Arrola didn't have like a good answer for it, but uh, <laughs> hopefully they bring, they bring it back before the World Cup. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah definitely a Just lot to take back. in. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally going back to where we were before COVID and a couple of years before that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get the torle the torneo largo thing. Um, I think it's a, um, I don't know. I really, I, I the, is the winner of that long, whoever has the most points at the end of the two tournaments, is the winner of that get a concachafa uh, qualification? What, what is the prize? Just a plastic trophy? I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see the point behind that. Um, what, what, what did your buddy say about that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, in in there's a there's like a running gag in Monterrey where uh, we dis, we dis, disaccredit uh, the championships of the opposite side, right? If so, you go for Tigres, you uh, essentially uh, disregard the championship of Monterrey and vice versa. So we right. have this thing that this meme that uh, goes like no vale si vale. So <laughs> my buddy was like, you know what, man? Just just right now, go ahead and tell me which ones. Uh, Balen and which ones no Balen, so <laughs> <laughs> so you get it straight from the get go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I was like, look, man, los que valen son los que ganan los tigres. Period. That's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's nothing to it, uh, but I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm not too sure. Do you think this is unnecessary? Like having that that trophy is is this like a to me? It's like a it's like a consolation prize. We know that you sucked during, you know, round robin tournaments, but here's, you know, some candy for you. You know, the MLS does that. They it's called the supporter oh, really? shield. Uh huh. The team that Get has the most here, points. Man. Yeah, the supporter shield. Um, nobody takes it seriously, as far as I know. And um, it, yeah, it's going to be the same in Mexico. I feel like who's going to give a shit about that? It, you know, it only care. No, the, in Mexico, you don't even care about the. Um, what is it? The, you know, they have the game between the winner of the Clausura and the winner of La Apertura. Yeah. Nobody nobody mm -hmm. gives a shit about that either. You know, they just care about the, <laughs> the torneos cortos. Um, so uh -huh. this is just another another little trophy grab. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't... I, there's no money to be involved in this either. There's no game. There's no... I don't know why this is a thing. And anything, if anything, they're going to lose money because they got rid of Repechaje. Um, I, I yeah, see why they got rid of it, just... trying to uh, make it more competitive, right? They want the best eight teams to qualify. They don't want a team that was 12 to qualify. Uh, but yeah, there's less games now. It's going to be less exciting and less competitive. But uh, I mean, we'll see. Maybe promotion relegation adds to that. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see when that gets Hopefully, to the <laughs> um, One thing that I... Go, sorry, go ahead. Uh, now, uh, I was just going to say, uh, they also mentioned and emphasized a lot of... Uh, young talent, young Mexican talent, how they want to focus on facilitating the young Mexican talent to come up through the ranks of the Liga MX teams and find a way mm -hmm. to transfer to Europe. Um, I, I just find it really interesting. Are Mexican teams really going to change? You know, are they going to stop over inflating the Mexican player and yeah. pri thus, thus pricing out European uh, bidders? Um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what that entails. The uh, we're going to help our young, our young guys move to Europe. I I don't see how that's going to be implemented, but it'll be interesting to see. Right in the money. That's something that I wanted to discuss. Uh, one of the interesting things that they said, Mikel Arreola was talking about. Well, one of the biggest difference between MLS and Liga MX is, is that MLS uh, has very uh, close ties with some of the European leagues, and they help players to get a dual citizenship whenever, wherever they can. So Mikel Arrola was like, we have to establish a network with European uh, leagues so we can facilitate uh, a Spanish passport to those Mexicans that can qualify for that and see if, how can we expedite that. And they, they were also mentioning something very interesting as to, um, I think big teams in Mexico are not going to change their model. They're, they're still going to you know be pushing for uh, the best talent in Mexico that is available. But Mikel Arreola was mentioning something that I found interesting, and uh, I hope that he, uh, you know, commits to it, is that the focus on developing younger talent and helping them out to go to Europe is a way to convince, uh, it, it's a way to mitigate the the risk of, you know, uh, of, of, of continuing having, 
la liga mx with a dominant uh number of foreign players like spain like england where mm -hmm. most of the yeah like you know you have real madrid who plays with almost no spaniards they uh, week in and week out uh right. yet they have a strong um national team right so the purpose is mm -hmm. let's see if we can facilitate the the Uh, I guess exporting Mexican players to to Europe, so or to a, a, other leagues. It doesn't have to be Europe. They, they he was also mentioning something like, let's see if we can send them to Asia. Let's see if we can send them to, uh, I mean, hell, the MLS, South America, somewhere else. I guess maybe not Africa, but <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was one of his like I guess kind of ideas and goals is not necessarily disrupting so them uh, a lot. The Mexic the Liga MX is. Uh, Tournament, I guess, team model, but pushing for let's let's develop the young talent and give them a free pass to Europe as soon as we can. So, uh, I mean, that's something that we haven't seen yet. It's always a we're gonna do it. We promise. <laughs> very politically, you know, be very diplomatic, very politic, politic, politician kind of style. But right, you know, they, they have to, they have to deliver. We'll see how how it uh, goes and if they're able to implement and if we're able to see changes come 2026 or if this is a long-term thing that they're, um, I'm guessing they're wanting to, this to implement by 2026 since they're going to have a World Cup at the, you know, hosting World Cup. But uh, this this feels like they're kind of behind the ball game here and uh, it's going to take time for sure. And uh, till we, we see, you know, results a la MLS, how, you know, they're exporting four or five players every freaking window um so uh we'll see man uh you know again a lot of bark we'll see if there's bite um but uh, a lot of talk for sure um well adrian um any closing comments there uh i mean what 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 else is to say man i again i think this is just was a i'm glad that they realized they made a mistake Uh, we have yet to see who's going to be the coach. It looks like they're, you know, leaning towards Ida Almada or Piojo, although Emilio Escarraga uh, reported that he was meeting with Marcelo, Biel Marcelo Bielsa. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's right. probably still hope that Marcelo Bielsa will join. Um, we'll see. I mean, uh, the like, closing statement is Liga Mekis, is Mikel Arreola. Just freaking make your, main your mind, uh, make your mind up. Torneo largo o torneos cortos, just choose one. No puede ser el chango de los dos plátanos. There's a lot of things you can do about it. You really have a lot of games. Just please, man. Please. Stop. Make the right choice. Stop. And just, just, just win the World Cup in 2026, man. Um, <laughs> that's too much to ask. Well, Adrián, uh, as we wrap it up, man, where can our listeners find us? They can find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other podcast uh, service you are a subscriber on. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Puro Pinche Gol. We'll be posting some wild stuff out there. Yes, sir. Make sure to follow us, and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Adrian, been a pleasure, man. See you next time. Thank you, man. Take it easy. See you, bro.